Hello and welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I'm going to make a start on something that is going to be a long-term project. I say this because I have a room in my doll's house that is um, destined to be a library and a library needs books and anyone who has made miniature books knows that they take time and yeah I'm going to need quite a few so I'm going to start now and then hopefully by the time I get to the library um, I'll have um, a bit of a stockpile going on and what I thought was that we could take a look at some different ways of doing books so let's get on with it anyone who has ever made miniature books knows that whichever technique you use they take time and I thought that if I was to explore some of the different techniques we can see what are time effective what are worth the effort because to be fair if you're going to be putting books on a shelf they don't all need to have pages they don't all need to be hand stitched and um, perfectly finished a lot of those um, books that you get for filling shelves are in fact just blocks with spines on the front now you might think that's a cop out but it happens in real libraries a lot of the the big stately homes in the UK have fantastic libraries but here's the thing they used to buy the books by the foot or the yard they would send to a book dealer and say they wanted X amount of books or X amount of shelves worth of books and they got to be this colour that colour bound like this and they just buy them like that and they were literally fillers so don't feel bad about putting filler books in your, on your Del, Dolzo shelves, you know, you'll be in good company. But as I say, there are different techniques, so I'm going to look at a few of them. And I'm going to start with one that I've seen quite frequently, but that I've never actually managed to get my um, head around myself. And that is one whereby you use the... Um, binding of a magazine and the pages of a magazine to make a miniature book and that's what we're going to do. Now obviously for this you need a magazine of some description that's got the sort of binding that this one has got. This is a freebie from a um, supermarket from the grocery store. It's an advertising book and um, I think that's a reasonable size for 1 12th scale books for the spine they're going to be quite good obviously if you buy magazines that you then recycle by all means you can use them but if you can get it something free it's even better this is destined for the recycling and um, yeah we're going to give it a go now I think the first thing I need to do is work out how big I need um, my books to be. Now obviously this is far far too big so the first job is going to be to mark out how deep I want the books to be and then um, to cut off the rest of the magazine. It will all be going in the recycling I promise. To work out my scale I have got a um, book off the bookshelf pretty much at random and I'm just going to measure it and that is just over five inches now that means I need my miniature book to be probably somewhere around about well somewhere under half an inch deep I think I may go for looking at the marks on here I may go and that would be three eight 
eighths, three eighths, mm, three eighths of an inch. That might do. Mm. This is the point where the maths has to kick in. Now I'm sure if I worked it all out, if I work it out in centimetres, it is just under 13 centimetres. So I want it to be just over which centimetres isn't ideal. That is actually it's 128 millimetres, which means I would need it to be about a centimetre. That is a centimetre, 10 mil. Yeah, that's a little three eighths of an inch. I think that's what we're going for. I'm going to go for a measurement of three eighths of an inch and then um, work with that. This is the sort of thing that normally I'd work out off camera and then come back and say, the book is this and I'm going to do it at this. But I decided I'd let you get a glimpse into um, how fun it can be working out what scale you're going to do things. The maths is not a fun part, but it's a case of looking at it and thinking, hmm, that could work. So I have drawn a line at the correct measurement and I am hoping that I can actually cut this out cleanly. I've got a knife with a nice fresh blade in it and I've got my non-slip ruler and I'm going to try lining that up on there and um, take the plunge. I'm not sure if I'm doing this on my line or not. I think I'm a little bit inside it. And I've just gone through a few pages so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock the camera off and carry on doing this off screen where I can actually um, get into a better position. And um, we'll see how I get on. Now I've cut the pages off, I'm just left with the binding. I've actually got it in two pieces because by the time I got to the bottom I realised that I'd managed to get a bit of a um, reduction. That piece is smaller than the rest of it. It could still be used, just be slightly smaller books, which would be great if that's what you're looking for. Now I'm going to make a comment now. I'm not convinced that these are going to be the best books to put on a shelf. Now if you wanted a few books to have a book on a bedside table or even as some people do a pile of books by a bed this would be a great technique because you can make it look like some well-worn pages. I'm just not sure that it's going to be what I want but I've done it, I'm going to do this, we're going to follow this through and um, see where we take it. The next step is obviously going to be to cut these down into book size pieces. Now the book I'd got is about two inches taller than it is wide and um, so I need to work out approximately how big I'm going to make these to make them look like kind of regular paperback books. Now I add approximately um, 10 millimetres, about 3 eighths of an inch, which is my sort of, it's a bit over 3 eighths of an inch at that end, actually it's probably right, more like right at that end. Yeah, that size is actually the size it should be, oh well, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I can disguise it when I put things on the shelves later on anyway. So I need to add a little bit more. So I'm probably going to go for somewhere in the region of about 13, maybe 14 millimetres and um, mark some lines to cut this up into books. I think that's what I'm going to do. The moment, hmm, I'm a bit 
not 100% sure about this technique, but we will see how I get on. So I cut my strips up and I've got a series of little books. And then I hit a roadblock. You see, I was so focused on the idea of using the magazine for pages that I never thought how I was going to do the covers. And I want to be honest, I'm still not 100% sure. You see, these will look good on the shelf. That one's not very straight, but I'll find one that is. That one's better. I'm going to make a good book on a shelf. They've got a nice bit of substance to them and um, yeah, but they'd make a better book sort of dog-eared. Oh, that's got a bit that's come out. That's not good. It does happen. There was some, um, there was an advertising flyer in there that I didn't realise was there until I started cutting it up. But you can make the book all dog-eared and um, you could turn it into a well-loved book, the sort of thing that somebody has read over and over and over again. But to do that, I think I'd want to put a cover on there that actually represented a real book or a plausible real book. So I may be returning to this, this technique to make something in particular. But I think for the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go with doing a plain um, cover. What I'm thinking is that I'm going to cover them with some copier paper that I'm going to colour. It's a bit of a cop out, I know, but I'm thinking of these in terms of my um, shelf villas, not the sort of um, main books that are books in, um, you know, in focus that actually want to have visible titles and such like. Um, I could add some tiny titles to the sides. I have got a um, nice little fine pen. It's possible, but for the moment, I think we're going to go with the easy option. And yes, like I say, it's a bit of a cop out, but I've got lots of ideas for books, but they aren't really going to work on these. These are, well, I don't know. Some of them I could use as they are, you know, they look like there might actually be a book. They haven't got any writing on them. I've got a couple that have got writing on the um, spines. I've got one that says March. And I've got another one that's got the name of the supermarket on it. And I can't find any of them at the moment. Oh, there it is. March. It's just the way it's come out. But I kind of like them. I'm going to use them. I'm just not 100% sure how. So, we're going to um, give making these a um, cover a go. Now, if these books, as I say, were going to be given more weight in my library, I'd go to the trouble of making them proper covers, maybe scanning um, books that I actually own, and then stitching them together and printing them out to the right size. At the moment, I don't have the brain power for that. I'm going to be honest. A lot on my mind, so I'm going to keep it simple. And this is the sort of easiest way. Now what I've got here is some ordinary copier paper, printer paper, and some alcohol markers. Now I'm using alcohol markers. You could use paint, whatever you wanted. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these as a guide. And I'm going to do a strip that is about a millimetre um, wider than my books are long. The books are, I can't even remember what size I did them to. <laughs> I sort of worked it out by eye, but I did do a measurement and I think they're actually, yeah, they're about half an inch high. I went for something that was a recognisable measurement. And 
The reason I've got two pieces here is because, as you can see, it go, goes through. Alcohol inks always do that. It's not a problem, it's what happens. Now, I've only got three colours at the moment. I could do them all different colours. I could do them all the same colours. But I'm just going to do some of this and then... So I think I've got enough. I should have enough for a couple to work on there. So what I'm going to do, obviously, is I'm going to um, find some scissors because I tidied everything up. And now I can't find anything because I've put things away. And when I put things away, yeah, it's not good. Anyway. I will find the scissors and I will be back and we will start covering the books. So we have my strip of coloured paper. And as you can see, I've actually managed to get two different tones out of that, which is kind of cool. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my book and I'm going to take some glue and I'm going to cover what is in effect the front with a good amount of the glue. Now at this point I want to stick the cover onto the coloured paper. It can overlap a little bit. That doesn't matter at this stage. And I need to adhere it well. Now you want a good covering for no other reason then if you get a good even coating, it's going to um, bubble less, that kind of thing. At least with the glue that I use, this is a case of establishing what works with your chosen glue. And then I'm, I've done the spine and I'm going to go back around and do what will be the back cover. And I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim that off. Now what I did do is I cut this off the main piece of paper with a craft knife and um, wished I hadn't because the craft knife wasn't very, um, wasn't very good. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit and then I will trim it off. But in the meantime, I've got another piece here and I'm going to repeat the process with another one of my little books. It's not difficult, but as with anything with making miniature books for the doll's house, it's time consuming, repetitive, and um, is enough to make you wonder why you are doing this in the first place and I feel like that and I've only ever filled um, small bookcases. I'm filling a library. This is going to take a lot of books and um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of cheating I believe. So these can sit and dry because you don't want to um, try and trim them until the glue is well and truly set because otherwise you'll just rip your covers but I have actually got the start of my books now if you want to be fancier you can mark out your sort of strip that you're going to work on and then you can put different colors on and I'll show you that in a minute what I've done with this is I have put a strip that is approximately three quarters of an inch deep and then I've just sort of divided it up by getting my little book, putting it on the piece and rolling it over and giving plenty of um, extra room to go around. And then all I need to do is I just need to go on it and if I go for sort of the middle and I'll put a red strip on this one. That means we'll have a red um, spine. 
told you my mind wasn't really with it. And then I'll put some more red down here and maybe make it a bit more um, wobbly, not quite so precise. And it doesn't look like much on there, but it will give the book a different look when it's on the book. Likewise, you know, I can do anything I want. I can do lines at a sort of angle. And again, when I come to attach them to the book, it will look different. So I'll just show you how this is going to work. I'm going to use my scissors and cut these out. Move those out of the way. We don't need all the paper there. And I'm going to start with the red one. Now because I've put something that's going to go on the spine of a book, I'm going to start off by spreading the spine evenly. And um, sticking my cover to it. These are a bit, um, dare I say it, rough as far as books go. But all you are going to see is the spine, maybe a little bit of um, the front or back if I put them with books that are smaller. So that is the other thing. These are great but they're all the same size, they're all the same thickness. I need a variety of books. And there again I've got a book that when I trim it off is going to look a bit different. And I can repeat it with this one. Which that's the original side, that's the side I want to stick it to. Now I will be doing some books that resemble real books. I have got some books that resemble real books in my collection and um, I'm very appreciative of the people that make them, especially the ones that are um, readable. But those can go aside, they can dry and then we'll trim it off. And I've got the rest of the pile to do. I've got all these to um, cover. So I'll be back shortly. I have been busy gluing and sticking and um, I'm back to show you how I'm trimming these books. Now if you actually line them up on one edge when you do them, like I did for this one, which is one of the first ones I did, it makes it so much easier. But if, it, if you don't, you can trim both ends. Now what I tend to do is get my scissors and I just trim along the over spill at the front or back like so and then I can do the other side similarly and then I'm left with my book but with excess at either the top or the bottom depending on how you look at it. Now this one you need to use the very tips of your scissors and just fold them in, um, sort of push them in and then follow around the top of the book trimming off against the pages. Now, this one's actually the worst one I've done. It's a bit lopsided but I can go back and take off that extra little bit just to tidy it up a bit. And then I've got a passable book with pages 
that could go on a shelf and nobody's going to look at it twice, which is what I want. If you feel the need to add a bit more detail to the spine of your book, a um, fine marker, fine pen is the best thing. Now this is a Pigma Micron pen, which is an archival ink pen. And um, I find these work great on most um, inks and things. And all I'm going to do is I'll just put a little line across one end of the book. It's not done it particularly straight, but hey ho, you could put more lines or if you are feeling daring, you can put a title on the book. No. I am not doing this very well, I must admit, but I am trying to do it and keep it in shot. And I think my pen might be running out. And then I've written very roughly magic on it. Obviously, if you aren't trying to do it on camera, you can get smaller than that. I've written quite small labels, but it takes time and um, it's not exactly um, filmable. You don't even want to think about the positions that I get into to try and get the nib in the right place. But you can do that if you want. Obviously, these are what I call filler books, so they don't need titles. Not really. Just to show you what they look like, if, as they would do if they were on shelves, I've sort of stood them up on end and you can see the... Um, spines. I think these are going to work. They're not the best books. Hopefully we can make better. But um, this was just something that I wanted to have a go with. I've seen people make some really fantastic books using this technique. But I think, to be fair, it would work better for 1 6th scale than 1 12th. Or for a larger 1 12th scale book. Because I think it's sort of lost at this scale. I could have done just as well by one of my other methods. But nevertheless, there are some books that have been made from something that would otherwise have gone in the recycling. Which I suppose means that I could have labelled this video as being a trash to miniature treasure. Maybe I need to come up with some other ways to turn trash into miniature book treasures. Hmm, I'll have to think about that one. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. Maybe even ring that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when I upload a video. Normally, I upload once a week, mainly on a Friday, but I never say never. I don't guarantee that it's going to stick to that schedule because sometimes real life comes in the way of the miniatures, whether we like it or not. But that aside, until next time, bye.